Now let's yeah. move to a completely different issue, the uh, crazier recess of, recesses of the uh, trans agenda. Uh, a well-known trans woman, Blair White, we've had her on this uh, station before, she said once, a transgender three-year-old is like a vegan cat. We all know who's making the lifestyle choices and keep that in mind whilst you watch this. Thank you, your face, Ty. Makeup. You put makeup on it? Mm hmm How old are you? Seven. No. How old are you? Seven. You're four. No, it's seven. Are you a boy or a girl? A girl. A girl? Mm hmm Were you born a girl? Hmm? Were you born a girl? Yes. When you were a baby, were you a girl? Yes. Are you in a boy's body, though? Mm, yes. Yeah. So, Parnell, here we have a four-year-old boy that identifies as a seven-year-old girl. The mum is quick to correct the child's age, uh, but she seems very content to uh, allow the child, perhaps even encourage the child, to identify as a girl. What's happening here? Well, isn't it funny? I've always thought when my son was little, I always thought there's something very Orwellian about children. They're always very happy to declare black, white and basically torture you <laughs> through crying and tantrums until you agree with them. So I think, you know, anything said by a child that age should be taken with kindness and um, you just let some things slide and you correct some things. And, you know, it's not always important. My son couldn't tell girl or boy, male or female pronouns or anything at that age. So I think it's pretty unimportant, a child declaring themselves another gender, or for that matter, another being at that age. At that age, my son's uh, goal in life was to grow Ooh. up to be a baby turtle. So, um, you know, I, I just... <laughs> Fortunately, we didn't have the surgery at the time. Um, so he's fine now. How dare you? But That's right. We should have affirmed. Um, so, look, I think, of course, you know, it's you, you have to be gentle. There are people who genuinely suffer from gender dysphoria, and they do from, from quite a young age. And, of course, you never want to trample on somebody's feelings when especially they have a, a very dislocated feeling in their own body. But you also, with children, Children, of course, give them some guidance and teach them what is what is a girl's body, what's a boy's body. We refer to you as he. Yes, you might not figure that out for a while. My son didn't realise that his best friend was a girl for years. Um, and, <laughs> and, you know, you, you sort of just correct them gently over time while trying not to trigger any tantrums, ideally. Um, so I, I think... You know, I wouldn't have been terribly upset with with my son having a face full of makeup should that have been presented to me, and I wouldn't have been pre terribly pre terribly surprised with him declaring himself seven either. You know, it's a, this is something that children do. I'm, I'm with you, but I, and, I, I, I don't I'm think just, that should lead only, to. That's right. The problem my treatment when we, decide, or when we decide to affirm everything. And, and decide to railroad them from a passing comment made at four years old into a life of whatever they've declared themselves to be, a baby turtle. Yeah. Well, yeah, lifestyle choice. I think I wanted to be a dolphin or a mermaid when I was around that age. So your son and I would have got along, I think, uh, <laughs> the turtle and the dolphin. Um, well, now, we're Terry, we're I've got a more... I was just going to say, Terry. we live in a world which 40-year-old girls can declare themselves experts on climate change and be held as the greatest <laughs> uh, greatest guru on climate change forever after. Um, so why not four-year-old boys declaring themselves as seven-year-old girls? Everything seems to be up for grabs. Well, why not? I don't know why people get into trouble when they fake being a particular race. Like we had a, a, a couple of cases of people getting roles under false pretenses. But, you know, if you can identify as anything, maybe you can identify as a different race as well. They would maybe be ahead of their time. Um, now, I want to ask you about Australian business executive and the co-architect of Scott Morrison's so-called gas-led recovery, Andrew Laveras. Uh, he's preparing to lead a new push for a price on carbon. He recently entered discussions with Joe Biden's climate envoy, John Kerry, over how the world should implement carbon pricing regimes. Uh, Terry, what do you make of this uh, development? Well, it's, it's not unexpected, Rita, because the reality of any push to demonise uh, carbon 
and carbon, and particularly coal, obviously, but also gas, uh, is to put a price on on so the so-called uh, emissions that will emerge from carbon carbon when you when you burn it. Uh, I think that in the case of Liveris, he's driven by a particular desire to promote co gas over coal, because if you put a price on carbon, quote unquote, because co gas emits less carbon dioxide when it's when it's converted into whatever it's converted into fuel or to in in the petrochemical cycle it emits less carbon dioxide so this would favor gas as opposed to coal so that but the bottom line is is that it would make both those sources of energy that much more expensive and it's all you know whether we do it by actually formally putting a price on carbon quote unquote which is supposed to be the market way to to reduce dependence on carbon uh, on fossil fuels or whether we do it by other means uh the bottom line is we're going to make things far more expensive and less available to consumers both industry and uh, individual individuals consumers and just quickly terry do you think scott morrison has done a good enough job selling this u-turn to the Australian public and, and the people who would traditionally vote for the coalition? Has there really been a clear explanation of why he's changed his position so dramatically from the last election? No, I think it's a disaster narrowly for him personally and politically, but it's, much, it's a much bigger disaster for the country because we, we end up with this morass where we're not headed in any real sensible direction or even an, a, a, an irrational direction, but at least having some sense of how we're actually going to go down that pathway. And I think but we're going know, to see the outcome in, pretty negatively when we get to the election in May. You know, Terry, though, this is why I would say a carbon price is a, is a better outcome than no carbon <laughs> price in this situation, because do you really want government making the decision to subsidise various businesses i mean if you're going to if you're going to have a penalty on carbon then i would much rather that that penalty were regulated publicly through the market rather than parnell i'm liking this point but i've to... got to go to a break parnell <laughs> we're, we're going to continue discussion next time i'm going to remember precisely where we are parnell mcginnis terry mccran will pick it up next time around thank you for your time tonight